Animal Farm is an allegorical and dystopian novel by George Orwell, published in England on the 17th of August, 1945. According to Orwell, the book reflects events leading up to the Russian Revolution of 1917, and then on into the Stalin era of the Soviet Union. In Animal Farm, each human and animal represents a certain group of people, organization, or a specific person in the real world. Let's start with the humans. Mr. Jones represents the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas Alexandrovich Ramanov, or Nicholas II. Mrs. Jones represents his wife, Alexandra. Mr. Pillington doesn't really represent one person, but rather is a composite of all the leaders of England. Mr. Frederick doesn't really represent one person either. Frederick is a composite of all the leaders of Germany, however, throughout most of the book, Frederick is a representation of Hitler. And finally, Mr. Wimper, who represents the capitalists who did business with the Soviet state. And now, let's move on to the animals. We'll start with the pigs. Napoleon represents Joseph Stalin, the second leader of the Soviet Union. Squealer represents the Russian media, which spread Stalin's version of the truth to the masses. Snowball represents Leo Trotsky. Trotsky was one of the original revolutionaries, but as Stalin rose to power, he became one of Stalin's biggest enemies and was eventually expelled from the Politburo in 1925. Old Major represents the father of communism. He represents Karl Marx, but in some ways he also symbolizes the original communist leader, Vladimir Lenin. Now onto the horses. Boxer represents the working class. Boxer is portrayed as being a dedicated worker, but as possessing a less than average intelligence. Clover is just Boxer's female counterpart. Molly seems to be some sort of representation of Russia's upper class, but since Orwell portrays her as a horse, the same animal used to represent the working class horses, Boxer and Clover, Molly may simply represent members of the working class that remain faithful to the Tsar. Now onto the dogs. The dogs that protected Napoleon seem to represent the military police. Now on to the birds. The birds in the book seem to be left out of the primary motto of animalism, four legs good, two legs bad. Similarly, in real life, there were several classes of citizens left out of the socialist rhetoric as well. Most of the communist slogans dealt with the proletariat, which was primarily a reference to urban factory workers. The rural farmers, the clergy, and the other non-labor union types probably felt left out, just as the birds did in the novel. And just as in real life, most would be left out or killed after the revolution. The Raven Moses symbolizes the Russian Orthodox Church. The hens seem to represent peasant farmers in Ukraine. In the book, Napoleon calls for the hens to surrender their eggs. This is a reference to Stalin's attempt to collectivize the peasant farmers in Ukraine. Just as in the book, when the hens tried to resist Napoleon, so too did the Ukrainian farmers try to resist Stalin. But unlike in the book, where only nine hens were starved to death, in real life it is estimated somewhere between 4 and 10 million Ukrainian peasants were starved to death by Stalin. The pigeons, that were sent out every day by Napoleon to spread the word of animalism, represent the Communist International, or the Common Turn as they are generally known. There are only two other animals that are really worth mentioning, and that would be Old Benjamin the donkey and the sheep. Old Benjamin doesn't really represent anyone, and the sheep just represent the masses of people that followed the Communist Party without question. So in short, it is hard not to see the genius behind Orwell's work. He was able to retell something as complex as the Russian Revolution and the rise of communism in Europe by using animals, as well as doing it in a short 10-chapter novel. And that's why I think George Orwell's Animal Farm is such a great piece of literature.